goodness gracious. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Uh, winner of the Audience Award at Sundance and South by Southwest, National Geographic Documentary Films Science Fair follows nine high school students from around the world on their journey to compete at the International Science and Engineering Fair. The film offers a front row seat to the victories, defeats, and motivations of an incredible group of young men and women who are way smarter than I'll ever be, and on a path to change their lives and the world through science. I got a chance to see it. Uh, it is so good. And if you're in New York, you can see it too this Friday, September 14th at the Landmark 57. Uh, there's a bunch of other locations around the country, but we'll get to that later. Uh, here to tell us all about it, the dynamic filmmaking duo themselves, Christina Costatini and Darren Foster are here. How about that, huh? How about that? It's not bad. Uh, we're going to bring him out here in just a second, but first, I believe we have the trailer for the film, so let's go ahead and run that clip. The winner in the category of Medicine and Health Sciences is the Making it to ISA, that's like the big thing. You kind of have that status of being in like the group. I would say that a lot of people are jealous of me. On deadlines, I'm awful. I wait until the deadline to start working. I listen to trap music and classical music. Pass it up. Just blast it up full volume. I actually don't listen to classical music that much. I just listen to mostly trap. But you're not going to cure cancer. You're going to prevent cancer. Yes. If you're there just to win the prize, you're missing the point of science fiction. You enter into this new kind of world I didn't even know kind of existed. It's one of the best weeks of my life, like every time I go there. Ela tem um sonho realmente de sair, de crescer. E eu acredito que se eles ganharem, as portas talvez vão se abrir. I'm gonna be so proud when one of my kids win a Nobel Prize, because they will. It's so simple. Finalists from 78 countries, regions, and territories around the world. You can think of it as the Olympics of Science Fair. We ain't going nowhere to the end of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the most impressive. I plan on shaking the planet until I'm convalescent. If I could just achieve and not just me, but uh -huh. anybody else who's going to create what only I can so simple. Simple as one, two, three. Winning will change your life in ways that you don't even comprehend. Welcome to Los Angeles. Today's like the judging day. So we're going to get judged for what, like six hours today? I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys, put your hands together and make some noise. Christina Costantini and Darren Foster right here. Thank you. Um, it's a great trailer, too. It's a really good trailer for the film. Uh, the film itself, I was telling you backstage, I'm going to say it a bunch out here. I absolutely loved it, and, and congratulations, guys. It, it is Thank fantastic. You. It really is. Uh, we're going to jump into the whole process, but as I often love to start my talks here, because I have a little bit of time, just uh, how are you? How are you two doing? Darren, Christina, how is life right now? Life is pretty good. Yeah, I'd We've imagine. been on the road a lot uh, with the film, and it's a lot of fun because uh, it's a fun, inspirational story, and so it's really great to get out there and, and talk to people about it. It's been, it's been real fun, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're former investigative or recovering investigative journalists, and so this is like ha the happiest thing we've ever done. So being able to talk about all these like cool, funny, weird kids is totally different than what we usually talk about. I have to imagine that made the moments leading up to actually sharing it with an audience like just so uh, intense and wonderful. And, and what has that been like, seeing the response? I mean, winning the Audience Award and, and seeing the response from people, watching it with the crowd, tell me the whole thing. I imagine that's got to be great. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, we, we, you know, the, the first time we screened it with an audience was the first time I think Christine and I had ever shown anything in the theater before. So it's a totally uh, different experience. And um, we showed it for the first time at Sundance at a volunteer screening before the festival actually, actually began. Uh, and it was just such a surreal experience. Like everybody was laughing and clapping and cheering uh, for the kids. And it was just amazing. Uh, I sweat through my shirt. Uh, <laughs> from the anxiety of screening in front of people, but it worked out really well, so it was great. 
What was it like for you? I mean, we had been with the film editing it for yeah. so long that we had forgotten that like it was funny and fun. And so <laughs> hearing people laughing was a totally uh, strange experience. And uh, it's just been amazing to see that people are reacting to it. I mean, it's the dream. People uh, that uh, routinely will, will come in here and, and screen their stuff for large audiences and stuff often talk about how they learn so much about their, their project from that process. And I'm wondering, uh, this is the first time you've ever done that, the first time you've ever d done a piece of work in this way and experienced that. Was there a fear that you would see something and think, oh, we have to change this, but it's too late, the film's done? Or did you, did you just have to throw everything into the wind, it's done, it's done, and just it is what it is? Like, what was your mental state as you're watching these people respond to things that you forgot yeah. maybe were even there? Yeah, I think it's been a strange experience because there are even lines that we didn't think were funny. We just thought like it was like a huh, moment yeah. that ends up getting the biggest laugh of the whole movie. And so it's been a, a funny experience to things that you thought would work don't and then things that y you had no idea would work really do. And so, uh, yeah, it's part of us has wanted to go in there and make changes, but move it around. Uh, move it around. Yeah, but it's locked. Yeah, it's locked. You got to walk away. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, that's oh, it. yeah, no, I mean, by now we've seen it a thousand times, so we see everything that's wrong with it, so, uh, yeah, but, yeah, right. Point, right, but nobody else notices it, but we just, we're too close to it, so. Yeah, yeah, well, all right, well, let's go, let's go back a little bit, talk to me about how this, this whole journey began, what were you guys doing before this film, and, and how did you come to work on this project together? Well, it begins with Christina much earlier than it began for me. So, yeah. um, I was a science fair kid myself. I competed for two years in the international fair, and it totally changed my life. And um, I w went to a high school that celebrated sports, like almost every high school in America. And science fair kids didn't quite get the same credit. And um, so, so I, it was really like a lifeboat to me. It, uh, I finally went there and felt like I had found my tribe. Yeah. Um, and also, it's just full of these like weird, funny, amazing, ambitious kids. And I knew from that age it would make a great documentary. I didn't know that uh, I would become a documentary filmmaker. But so, she you know. Th it was a story. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. 13, 13 years later, I pitched the project. Um, Darren and I had worked on a very sad project about opiates together, yeah. and we needed a break. And uh, we both have a sense of humor. And, and what you know, better break, right? Yeah. Hang on, you left out a very important part. Did you or did you not place fourth in your respective <laughs> category when you were in the science fair? I did place fourth. I Which, did. after watching this film, that's a huge deal, and we'll hold for applause. So we'll go ahead and we'll Good. recognize. Yeah, it's a big deal. Darren, did you place fourth in anything in your youth? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> never, never, no. Neither did I, don't I worry. I mean, I was a science kid too, and I did science fair, but I was more in the baking soda volcano world. <laughs> and so I had no idea this world, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had, I had no idea that this world existed until Christina, you know, brought me to yeah. a scouting trip in 2016 to see the science fair and I was blown away. Um, and it's just an amazing world. The kids are celebrated like rock stars as they should be. Mm -hmm. um, so it was real, real fun to see it with fresh eyes and you know come to it in that way. Yeah, for sure. How did so? Okay, so you guys come together. You know, we need a break. We need this fun project. You have this idea. You have this story. Where do you guys begin? And how much? How much footage did you ultimately end up capturing? Because I have a follow up to that, but I'm curious. Just like yeah. How much you guys acquired in the so, process? So actually, like for pitching the project, that clip of Jack was super important because people get it immediately. Brilliant. It sets it up right away. Yeah. And then also the idea of the science fair dance is like I have these two ideas that really, I think, uh, helped us kind of, were the energy behind and our North Star for what this yeah. movie was going to be. Um, the Science Fair Dance is 2,000 of the nerdiest kids from around the world who are in a like incredibly high school so setting. Yeah. And uh, it's, I mean, there's romances, there's everything. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, we had to do a lot of shooting um, around the world and yeah. casting to find, to narrow it down. And we started with a bigger group, but we wanted to show kind of the underdogs um, from schools that are very not supportive of science or yeah. from towns that are not well resourced. Like we went to a very poor town in the middle of Brazil and then some of the best schools in the world. And we kind of wanted to show that diversity of experience uh, that is at the science fair itself. And you, and you nail that, you hit that nail on the head. But the other thing you get, and I won't spoil anything, but as filmmakers, you know, when there's 1,700 kids competing and you're going to follow a handful of them, there is a particular outcome you hope to have at the end of your film. <laughs> and again, I'm not spoiling anything, but the way you do, in my head, it's like, well, for them to do that, they either got really lucky, did a ton of research, or just it followed a ton of kids. Like, I don't know how you guys got uh, the, the, the way you did. You got it. So what was it like deciding who you would follow? And, and were you hoping for that? 
I obviously like, you know, I hope we get that kind of victory or something at the end. And, and, and what was that process like of deciding? Like, yeah, I mean, anytime you do a sort of competition doc, you, you want, you hope you have a winner or someone that does really well. Um, and I think, you know, Christina, Christina's inside knowledge of how the science fair works was really helpful in sort of figuring out which projects were the strongest, but ultimately like the driving factor for the kids that we chose was just their great stories. Um, and, you know, a lot of the kids obviously came from strong schools that had a really good chance of doing well. Um, but we also had a few surprises that we weren't anticipating, um, which worked out really well for the film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ultimately we were looking for just kids that were representative of the kind of kids that wind up at the science fair. And you know, there's 1,700 kids from 78 different countries. And, and really it's just like an embarrassment of riches when it comes to storytelling, because yeah. all these kids are amazing, have incredible stories. We just picked you know, nine great ones. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the thing, like, I'm watching and I'm like, if you had any one of these 1,700 kids, I'm like, this is a genius, she's a genius, they're gonna win, this is it. Like, so like, how do you look at that and go, these are the nine that we're gonna follow? What about uh, uh, Serena McCullough there? Oh my she's goodness. She's incredible. She's amazing. <laughs> she's a force uh, of nature. Uh, yeah. Absolute force of nature. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the only teacher we really get like a full profile on uh, how did she get folded into the mix? When did that become part of the film? Yeah, so initially we thought we were going to only be following students. This was going to be a movie focused completely on students. Um, but we knew that Jericho High School, where she teaches on Long Island, is the best science fair school in the world. I mean, they yeah. continuously, every year, place, you know, it's six or seven kids getting placing at the International Fair, which is incredibly hard to do. Um, and so we went there, and then... We fell in love with the doctor and just kept following her around. And at one point, I think her own movie. Yeah, at, <laughs> I mean, at one point at the fair, we were like, okay, I think we're gonna have to break our initial structure for this woman because she is yeah. incredible, um, and yeah, powerhouse, and her kids do very well. Yeah, she she really is, and I she's also responsible for some of the bigger laughs in the film as well. Just like she's she really is a, a true character. You know, you mentioned um, from early on you had the dance planned and uh, the the opening and the victory, which is brilliant because it really does set up the stakes of like this kid's been on Colbert. You see all these things. You're like I, me as someone ignorant of uh, of ISEF and and the and the science fair. Um, it's, it lets me know what they're all competing for, right? So uh, other than Serena, what else did you guys kind of find and discover along the way while you were making this and had to like work the film around it because you couldn't let it pass you by? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously juggling all these stories is really difficult because there's, yeah. you know, nine different storylines we're following. But, you know, the, the most important thing to us was that we just let them be the kids that they are. Like we didn't want to, you know, sort of make them, uh, you know, sort of, rise to the stereotype of what a genius kid is. You know, these kids are really well-rounded. Um, they have other interests. Um, they're from very different backgrounds. And we wanted them, they're funny. Uh, so we wanted them to sort of be these three-dimensional characters that they are. They're, you know, they're real kids. Um, so it was really important for us to show that and let them be themselves. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think the other thing that we really wanted to do was to effectively show that they come from different places and different walks of yeah. life. And so I think where that comes together is in that travel sequence when they all leave their hometowns and they make their way to Los Angeles this year where the International Science Fair is. And you just see, in, you know, sort of all these stories stacked back to back, just that they come from very different places uh, and ultimately converge yeah. uh, at the International Science Fair. So when, when, did you, uh, when did you guys start working on this film? Um, let's see, 2015, I think we had the idea. And then we started, our first scouting trip was um, the spring of 2016. Got it. And then, yeah, we, we were in production, like full-on production for maybe five or six months. And then... Uh, production so before the election, so, yeah, oh, yes. So okay. before we got to watch the slow d disassembly and destruction yeah. of modern civilization as we know it, how did did how did? <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm showing my bias here, but uh, you know, you're making a film about kids in science and uh, about science fairs. How did the transformation of di of the conversation around science in our country change what you guys were working on and, and, and what everybody was thinking while this was happening? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think when, when Christine and I were initially talking about the film, it was just a, a fun film about science fair kids. You've said that since you got out on the stage. We need yeah. fun. We're making a fun film right. about kids. And now out of nowhere, your fun film about kids, which it is, for right. the record, it's tackling a topic that, right. well, okay, now there's other stuff we, we may or may not have to address. So what happens? Yeah. Well, I think the backdrop changed, right? Yeah. So, like, we were making the same film, but then the backdrop changed. And so these kids' lives are playing against 
a different background and a different environment. Um, at a time, you know, during the making of this film, there was a lot of sort of anti-Islamic sentiment. There was like a lot of anti-immigration sentiment. A lot, yeah. of, you know. Uh, anti-women sentiment. Um, so all these things were sort of happening in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, these themes suddenly just take on a different significance, I think, when you tell these stories. Obviously, the anti-science movement, this is, you know, predates the current administration. This is something that's been happening for years. Uh, and we wanted to show in this film that you know, it wasn't always the case in this country where science wasn't a priority. Right. There were times when science was a, was a huge priority in this country, um, and uh, it should be. And so these kids are very much sort of taking up the mantle. You know, we say often that you know, uh, at a time when adults are behaving like children in the face of huge global challenges, these kids are stepping up and behaving like adults. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and and I think it's both a reminder of what our past was like as a country and what our identity should be, um, and also what our future can be like because these kids are you know are going to be leaders. And yeah. um, I also think immigration is a big theme for us. I'm the yeah. daughter of Im of an immigrant, and um, you know most of our characters are immigrants or the children of immigrants. And so for us, that also be that also the backdrop changed, and the movie became a little bit different because of yeah. that. And you kind of feel that. I mean, like, the, the film, of course, there's uh, uh, Serena talking about how most of her children, uh, her kids that she teaches are, are, are sons and daughters of immigrants. She herself mm -hmm. is, is uh, sons and daughter, uh, daughter of an immigrant. And then, of course, uh, I, I'm my cynical mind refuses to believe that her school mm -hmm. uh, won't recognize her victory simply because they love sports. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just like, I, I want to be wrong about that. You know what I mean? But, like, these little backdrop things are there. Um, uh, and, and but they're just part of the story. You guys are really, you do a great job of focusing on the children and focusing on the heart of the story. What do you hope your film adds to this conversation that uh, not just science and education, but science in its uh, you know place culturally as well? Yeah, I think it's important for us to remember that our scientific community is made up of many, many immigrants and we are the country that we are. We've had the advancements that we've had because of the contribution of immigrants and it's important for us to remember that that is our strength as a nation. Yeah. And for me personally, that's part of what this movie is. Yeah, and I think the film is a bit of, of an antidote to the times we're living in. I think a lot of people are not feeling very hopeful, and I think these kids remind us that the future is very bright. Yeah. There's a generation coming up uh, that, you know, maybe we messed up the world a little bit, but these kids, you know, they have their priorities straight, and uh, they are up to the challenge. Yeah, not only is it fun to watch them, but it does give you hope. Yeah. Yes. You're just like, oh, all right, we're going to be all right, <laughs> as long as these kids are doing what they're doing. Um, I mean, to that end, I, I am forever an optimist, but Intel did recently pull its sponsorship out of nowhere of the science fair. Um, you know, what, what does that mean long term? Do we even know what that means yet? I, yeah. was, I was reading up on it, and I saw that it used to be Westinghouse, I think, years ago, and then it became Intel. And so th that kind of calmed me down, because I was like, all right, well, this has happened before. But I'm curious, you, as someone who's experienced it and really knows the world, what your take is on that. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's super important for me, and there are thousands and thousands of me's out there, a lot of kids yeah. whose lives have been changed. Um, but, you know, we really hope this movie will allow people to remember how important science fairs are, and maybe somebody else will take up the mantle of supporting this this amazing um, fair. There's also other fairs that have um, lost their funding. Oklahoma State Science Fair lost their governmental funding, and so they're completely on their own. But this is happening all over. So we hope yeah. the movie can remind people of you know what we were and what we right. can be. Raise profile, show people what, what these fairs actually are and, and why they're important, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for part of the film, we went back and we found the first ever winner of a national yeah. science fair, Dr. Paul Teshin. How'd you he's do 90, that? Yeah. He's well, amazing. Christina tracked him down, but <laughs> he's 93 years young. Investigator at the journals. time we were doing it. <laughs> and, and, you know, here's a guy who's had this, you know, really amazing career as a physician and researcher, uh, and still one of the greatest memories he has and one of the most important memories he has of, is participating in the first ever national science fair. Um, so I think, you know, for so many people who, you know, for whose science is a passion, this is a huge way to sort of validate um, that passion and a huge way to celebrate it, too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be a shame if we lost the science fair. For sure. 
And it's such an important part of American culture. <laughs> I, I couldn't possibly agree more. <laughs> but like, you know, as, as someone, I, I got once to, thanks to National Geographic, I got to inter, uh, interview a, bu a bunch of astronauts and, and it was one of the greatest interviews I ever had. And I'm a big science guy, but I was ignorant to the existence of the level of competition <laughs> yeah. in this field. So it's, it's really, it, it is a great film, but it is an important film in that way. Did you guys feel like it was important from the beginning or was it always, it's just been fun and it's become important? No, you know, I, I wanted to do this in part because the science fair was so amazing when I was there and the scale and you mm -hmm. can't imagine it if you haven't seen it. It's really, it, it is like the Olympics and these kids are celebrated. And I thought, you know, if I had seen this when I was 14, I didn't even know there was an international science fair until I won my state science fair. And they said, kid, you're going to, you're going, <laughs> you're going to the big leagues. I didn't know it existed. So I kind of wanted to make a movie that also kids could watch and, and get excited about. And I, I just thought if they knew this was out there, more kids yeah. would want to do science fair. Totally. Totally. How did National Geographic get involved? We're going to go to audience questions in just a second, but I'm made of questions here. How, you guys got partnered <laughs> up with them. How'd that, how'd that come together? Uh, so uh, National Geographic acquired the film in April, I think it was, right? March, April? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was just, you know, basically we, we won Festival Favorite at Sundance, and then we won the Audience Award at South by Southwest, and then, at, you know, we were a small film, we were a small crew, and sort of these festivals just basically elevated the profile of the film that people were like, oh, there's a film out there about the science fair. Yeah. Uh, and so National Geographic was interested, and, you know, once the deal was closed, we couldn't be happier. They're just an amazing partner. They make, it makes so much sense. They're just, you know, they're all about science and exploration. They have a great educational outreach program. So on so many levels, it's like the best partnership we could have ever imagined for this film and they've yeah. been so supportive and great with so us awesome. in the film. Well, I, I, it is a fantastic film. Oh, one last thing. Have you followed up with the kids? How, uh, how are they doing? Are they do they're amazing. They're going to be fine. I but, know that, but I'm yeah, just wondering. They're yeah. awesome. Um, let's see. Robbie, he's doing amazingly well. He was on the cover of Bloomberg Business Week. He has an art show in Paris. He's like, he's... Yeah, don't want to spoil anything, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to see them all on Saturday at our L.A. premiere. We're flying so all sorry. the kids out. Um, it's the first time we're going to see them. Some, we've seen some of them on the road here and there, but um, it's the first time we're going to see them all since Sundance, so we're very excited. Even the Brazilians are going to be here, yeah. so we're super excited. Everybody's flying in, yeah, That's from all so over exciting. the world, yeah. Uh, the, Absolute last thing. We talked about Kashri in the green room. Uh, how, what is her feeling on winning one of the, the arguably the most prestigious awards she could win in this field and, and, uh, and the school not even given a morning announcement about it? How does she feel about that? I think, I mean, spoiler alert, but now that she's at Harvard, I think it matters a little <laughs> less. I think she's, she's found her. her people. Yeah. But, um, she's found her place. She's yeah. found her tribe. Yeah, yeah but um, I, I think it does hurt. And yeah. I think it, like, you know, does, the football team, when we were there, did not win a single game. Yeah. And they got, like, parties and rallies and announcements. And Kashvi was never even talked about. So. But the, the, the amazing thing about that is you don't even, you, when you ask the kids about her, they're like shocked that she exists and that yeah. they, uh, she goes to their school. And it's like, there's, they, they almost, some of them are like, oh, I wish I knew, nobody tells me anything. Yeah. It just, it raises so many questions. I think there's a whole nother story and documentary <laughs> just about all that, but uh, I can't say it enough. Congrats, you guys did a Thank hell of a job. It's an amazing so film. All right, uh, I've taken up so much time, I'm sorry, but let's get the questions from the audience. We've got a bunch of microphones out here. First one right here. Hi, um, I, want, I wanted to know, besides the basic uh, baking soda, Volcano. Um, were there any? Uh, were they? Were sorry. Um, were there any uh, favorite projects that you used to do um, back when middle school fairs used to be a big deal? I mean, still are. So. That's a question for Christina. <laughs> no, Aaron, I love your project. <laughs> Talk about your project. Well, I did some groundbreaking research on the Venus flytrap. Uh, <laughs> Whether it would eat a hamburger. And Apparently not for It beans. did. It did eat a hamburger. Yeah, hamburger. <laughs> Cooked hamburger. <laughs> um, my project that I went to yes. this fair with was, well, I, I did like all kinds of like plant and electricity stuff uh, when I was in Take middle school. <laughs> yeah, but my, the project that I went to this fair with was about um, social conformity and peer pressure. And I designed an experiment that measured individual susceptibility to peer pressure in teenage boys. It was highly manipulative. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so you <laughs> Not allowed anymore, but yeah. But you got, is that the, is that the fourth place? Is that the, the yeah, ribbon yeah, winning? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I want to just talk about that for hours. They still, they still talk about it in the field of behavioral science. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for that. What do we got? We got two more. All right, let's get our next question. Looks like it's coming right down right here. Next question. Yes. You have a microphone. Let's go for it. Come on down. 
I'm just wondering, what are some lessons that you learned from the kids just by working on this film? Yeah, what lessons have we learned? Um, I think um, this kid, Robbie, he uh, is he works totally outside of the academic environment. He was failing out of math when we met him, and at the same time, he had won his state science fair with a prime number theory project. So he was totally, you know, he he didn't care about grades or that that level of success. He was just totally consumed by his own ideas and his projects, for better or for worse. But I right. do think it was, I mean. I do think it was very inspiring for me to think of like, this kid does not care about the system. He is working outside of it and he's coming up with his own brilliant ideas just because he wants to. And he, he wrote a machine learning algorithm that wrapped like Kanye West's raps and that's what he was working on um, when we met him. Oh, but he's, he's wonderful and inspiring. Yeah, I'd say, you know, the same thing. It, it, the sort of diversity of ways that kids learn, kids that approach the, their passions uh, was really revealing for me, and I, I and I also think that you know not all these kids are you know quote unquote geniuses. Some of them are for sure, uh, but a lot of them are also just kids that have applied themselves and worked really hard on something that they love. Um, so to me, it was just you know uh, sort of refocused me a little bit on just like oh, if there's something that you really love and want to pursue, you know, it does take effort and work, and um, yeah, and these kids were just doing it. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> it really is. Thank you. This is a great question. Thank you. So we got to do one more. Okay, last question right here. Hi. Uh, I love that this movie exists. Uh, the science fair was like the highlight of my eighth grade year. Um, <laughs> my question is, uh, why, why do you think that schools overvalue sports compared to the sciences? There, you're the jock. <laughs> you, I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't think it has to be that way, right? It's just the way it's sort of designed now. It's a, it's probably just easier to rally community against, you know, a, a competition and a team. Um, you know, some of the schools that are featured in 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 our documentary actually treat their team, their their science fair programs like teams. You know, like Dr. McCall is almost like a coach of her team, and so that's something the school could rally behind. Uh, but ultimately, I think it's just like a priority thing, um, and I think you know if. There was just some recognition and acknowledgement that you know not all your kids are uh, are jocks or whatever. Um, you know that that they're doing amazing thing, and there are also these competitions and these other places that they can sort of express themselves. Um, you know, it'd go a long way in, in in sort of leveling the playing field. I will I will say as much as I was saying like I'm s cynical about Kashfi's school and the reluctance. Of, I I do think you have to commend her her academic sponsor yeah. who was like. I honestly do. So she had to get. Uh, we can tell the audience yeah. this. Like yeah. she had. So she had to get an academic sponsor. She got was the football coach to do. Was it? The, yeah, head football coach head who fo knew nothing about science. And he was, would say it. Yeah. Who who was just a super supportive guy. He was just really good guy. Yeah. Wanted to help out. He's also the head of the feminist club and the head of the world religions club. <laughs> See, so even if there is something higher up that is preventing that school from recognizing her victories, it shouldn't sully the fact that there's really good people in yeah. that school that are supporting the kids. And, and doing all they can. I, I, yeah, I love that. Um, that was a great question, and you are great people. Thank you so much for being yeah. here. Thanks for having us. I hope you guys had fun. Congratulations on everything. I, I promise we would share with the world the dates. So it's in select theaters uh, this Friday, the 14th, September 14th. Uh, but if you're in New York specifically, Landmark 57. But go to nationalgeographic.com, and you can find all the different places it's going to be. I was, I was looking at the list last night. Wherever you are, whoever you are, you owe it to yourself to see this film. It's really fun, and, and it'll open your eyes to a whole world. Uh, that you're going to be obsessed with as soon as you see it. So go ahead and check it out. Make some noise. Everybody join me in thanking Christina and Darren for being here. Please, Thank round of you. applause. Thank you so much.